Coveted by many, the hype over the new Studio Series Optimus Prime has taken the fandom by storm, but Hasbro's new mini masterpiece has a dirty little secret that just might make it one of the biggest failures of the year. Welcome back to the show, it's Gay for May. Without a doubt, Studio Series Rise of the Beasts Optimus Prime is not only one of the best looking Studio Series figures to date, it's one of the best looking Optimus Prime figures, period. From the perfectly balanced fusion of G1 sensibilities and movie realism to the immaculate sculpting into Ultimately replicating the on-screen appearance, this mechanical marvel has enraptured the hearts of the Transformers community, and for good reason. Not since Bumblebee movie Soundwave have I felt so captivated by a robot mode. This figure looks majestic in a way that most other Transformers don't. He's so photogenic and packed with tons of dense detailing that makes every angle of him become a work of art. His size and proportions are outright Herculean, utterly befitting of a warrior psychopath like Movie Optimus. I'm going to find score. Yeah, all right. And then I'm going just circumcised. Oh, I didn't know you Transformers were Jewish. I think one of the biggest reasons why he looks so amazing is because of how well hidden his vehicle kibble is, and there's a few ways they do it. Sure, you could still see things like the windows on the chest and the extra long smokestacks, but most truck details get hidden behind panels or even absorbed into the figure's body. Other truck details aren't hidden at all, but are cleverly placed opposite the outwardly visible sides of the body to conceal them. If there was anything I would knock points off for on this figure, it would be the paint. Most of the figure is unpainted actually, aside from some choice detailing and the silver accenting. And while it generally looks quite good, a lot of gray pieces seem very mismatched and unfinished. Likewise, his leg shouldn't be a uniform blue and could have been broken up with some paint on the intersections to look more accurate. Next to his looks, another thing that's quite remarkable about this figure is his articulation. Optimus's range of motion is excellent some of the best you'll find on a mainline Transformer. But what distinguishes him from other figures are all the unique joints that he has. Firstly, he has some of the most unusually designed hips I've seen on a Transformer. They don't pivot like normal. The forward rotation is offset, which allows the leg to swing under and around the solid waist detailing. It's a neat way to preserve the shape of the waist, as opposed to how Bumblebee Optimus simply place these details on the hips themselves. The downside is that nearly all of the motion is forward, though they can go back a tiny bit, which is useful for locking Optimus into this very heroic posture. He also has movable skirts above his hips, a bit of side-to-side -side motion in his wrists, and even an ab crunch. But by far the most controversial joints on this figure are gonna be his shoulders. Optimus has the often maligned Rodimus or Tarn shoulders, meaning the shoulder's outward movement pivots from the body as opposed to a typical shoulder that pivots at the shoulder. And Optimus here has a pretty bad case of it too. He has a hard time pulling off his iconic let them come pose, at least without planting a big kiss on one of his shoulder bags edges. In tandem with the other articulation choices, I think the intention was to help Optimus appear more natural while standing. As a service to the design, I don't have a problem with it, and with enough creativity, he could still look cool and dynamic despite the limitations. But I also think he would have been perfectly fine if they just gave him normal joints. As you may have expected, due to the high level of engineering on this figure, he only comes with two accessories, one sword and the cap to one blaster. You have a few different options for the sword, either holding it or attaching it to the arm via this peg or slotting it in next to the wrist, which is something the wrist articulation helps facilitate. Then either hand can be completely flipped around to reveal a peg to attach the blaster to. This little cannon piece is nifty as a gimmick, but what, is it cold outside? Why did they give us this little shriveled cannon tip and not the big ass cannon we see in the movie? It doesn't look bad on the figure, but it it's totally inaccurate. I want the one in the movie, how am I supposed to... <laughs> How am I supposed to make them calm if they don't have a big cannon? Optimus is also missing another weapon seen very prominently in the movie, his battle axe. Luckily, the upcoming studio series leader Optimus Primal comes with a copy of Dead Axe, so you're gonna have to buy him to complete studio series Optimus Prime. Bro, that's like the theme to the movie! Like, unity and shit! Remember how the Autobots and the Maximals united to save the Earth? Remember when I united the tip of my wiener with RC's big plum? DSLs? So although I would love to end the video here and leave you with a fairly positive perception of this figure, he is a transformer and he has a second mode. Now I'm not going to mince words here, the vehicle mode looks terrible, and well below the standard I'd expect from Studio Series. At first glance, it seems like the typical cab over semi-truck that we're used to. Sure, there's some weird spots of unpainted gray plastic, but it's plastered with these ugly hinges around the sides that devour all of the space for the truck details. However, the real disappointment begins when you turn the vehicle around. What? 
the f- happened here? It's a complete mess. I realize there isn't much to see on the real truck, but that should mean that there's less to screw up. It would almost look better if the legs didn't do anything at all, as opposed to flaccidly folding up against the back of the cab. And between the floating boxes and the sculpted speed lines, they really looked at this and said, shit, that's good enough. They didn't even add a trailer hitch. That's why Optimus turns into a f***ing truck to hold a trailer. I already know a lot of people are going to say, well, I only care about the robot mode anyway. While I think that's a very honest perspective, that's the Transformers equivalent to saying you watch porn for the story. While I won't disregard the enlightening political allegory found in Plump Ladies 12, I will say that you're missing out on a crucial part of the experience if that's your only takeaway. Since the beginning, Transformers have been marketed on their ability to become real-life vehicles. In a way, that's the soul of the franchise. Sure, it's not a cardinal sin if a figure prioritizes its robot mode, but Optimus here looks to have done so at the expense of his alternate mode, merely contorting his body into another shape rather than producing a convincing vehicular form. So the question we have to ask now is, if a figure has a lot of positives, but fails to accomplish the stated goals of its toy line, is that figure a failure? And I would say fundamentally, the answer is yes. But on the other hand, broadly condemning this figure because of that is a huge disservice to what it does accomplish. So without getting mired too deeply in this philosophical examination of Transformers toys, I'll just say, enjoy the figure for what it provides, which again is a great looking Optimus Prime with some unique articulation points and a couple of fun but underwhelming accessories. And if you actually only care about the robot mode, give your figure to somebody who really appreciates transforming toys and just get the YOLO Park model. I hear they're actually pretty good. And if you want to see another powerhouse figure, check out my review of Studio Series Gamer Word Optimus Prime. <laughs> But anyway, that's just my opinions. Please leave yours in the comments below. Bye-bye.